Welcome viewers. In this series of videos, we are going to build an Arduino based ECU for model jet engines. The engine that we are going to use is J66 model jet engine from China. This engine is based on 66 millimeter compressor configuration, which is very popular with the model jet engine builders. Now, when we talk about ECU, an ECU generally takes in four inputs and controls the engine by providing four outputs. The inputs that it takes is the engine RPM, the exhaust gas temperature. It will take throttle input to control the speed of the engine and potentially a mode input for starting and stopping the engine. For outputs, uh, it will provide the uh, starter motor control. It will uh, provide the fuel pump control. It will provide the uh, glow plug control and it will provide the starting gas on off control. Uh, all this is coupled with a logic inside which uh, is used to control the engine. Now this engine is mounted on a stand here. Uh, for building the stand we use general uh, available items from the local hardware store. A few angle brackets, screws, uh, wooden board and uh, split clamps for the large diameter pipes uh, which seem to fit pretty snugly on this engine. Here is a walk through around the engine, how it looks like few components have been uh, attached and uh, wiring has been made for the starter motor and the glow plug as well as uh, the K-type thermocouple is inserted into the uh, exhaust uh, pipe. Here is the starter motor. This is the uh, glow plug cable. Uh, this is connected to a uh, module which uh, is used to control the glow plug. There is a K-type thermocouple going into uh, a hole built into the exhaust nozzle of the engine. Now we are going to test the starter motor control using a brushed DC uh, control unit. Here's a starter motor connected with a Dean's T-type connector. Here's a brush motor speed controller which is available from the websites. This makes the control of the starter motor easy uh, by keeping all the control uh, elements outside. We will use a three cell LiPo battery for testing the starter motor uh, speed controller. It's a general three cell 2600 milliamp hour battery. Here we are connecting it to the ESC with the Dean's T-type connector. The servo cable provides the power as well as takes the signal. So we'll use a generic servo tester to make sure this arrangement works. Here is an off the shelf servo tester. We are connecting it to the ESC. It's powered up.
The next unit that we are going to test is the glow plug control uh, module using uh, RCD3007. One of the aims of this project is to use off the shelf components that can be easily bought from the internet uh, and also to keep the power control components like the ESC for the motors and the glow plug driver module uh, outside the main microcontroller circuit. Battery power. Just making sure that the servo controller is working fine, and we are going to use this to control the uh, glow plug as well. Control module cable provides the power as well as takes the control signal. One thing to note here is if you are using this method, remember that the glow plug driver consumes a lot of current and ESC might get hot if you use this method to power the glow plug. When the light is constantly on, the red light, that means the glow plug is powered up. We'll disconnect the starter motor as we uh, just want to test the glow plug control module. Here, as soon as the full servo signal is sent, the glow plug is powered up. When it's uh, reduced, the glow plug is switched off. With this, we can control the amount of power we deliver to the glow plug as well. So we can control the amount of heating. The next component we are going to test is the fuel pump control unit using brushed motor speed controller. Normally fuel pumps are gate pumps which are coupled to a DC motor and can be controlled uh, with a uh, brushed DC motor controller very similar to the starter motor. It's a fuel pump which is coupled to our PC motor and it's now being connected to the uh, brushed ESC. Do like and subscribe our channel if you like these contents and want to see more videos like this. This provides encouragement for our team and help us produce more contents like this. Next we look at the RPM signal measurement and conditioning inside an RC jet engine. Along with the exhaust gas temperature, RPM measurement is one of the most important measurements required to control the state of the jet engine. Currently, the most common method is by using magnet inside the compressor nut and a hall sensor inside the compressor housing. Here is a demonstration of magnets inside the compressor nut. We have two compressor nuts, one with the magnet epoxy in place so it's not visible and the other one where we have placed the magnet outside the epoxy so you can see it. When we bring these two compressor nuts together, you will be able to see that they both attract or repel each other showing that the both the compressor uh, both the compressor nuts have uh, magnetic material inside them
that you see how the two nuts attracted uh, each other because of the presence of the magnets in both of them. The nuts themselves are made of aluminium, so they are non-magnetic material. You see how they repel each other depending on which side of the polarity is presented to the uh, other nut. Then another view showing both the nuts, one with the magnet clearly visible and the other one with the magnet epoxy in place. Here is the hall sensor which is inside the compressor housing and detects the uh, magnetic field. In this step, we are going to power up the hall sensor and measure the RPM signal to see how much is the uh, strength of the RPM signal from the hall sensor directly and can we use it to connect to microcontroller. If not, how we will condition it. So let's measure the strength of the signal first. We are powering up the hall sensor directly from the servo controller. So it's generally uh, providing 5 volts, that's what we will keep it at. And here's our digital oscilloscope to check the signal from the hall sensor. connecting ground to the ground of the oscilloscope and now connecting the signal pin from the hall sensor to the sense pin of the oscilloscope. Let's run the engine and see what type of signal do we get. Adjusting the scale, so that seems pretty small. We are getting a sinusoidal signal with uh, quite a bit of noise in it, and the signal strength is between 270 to 300 millivolts. So clearly this signal is very small to be used directly in a microcontroller. We need to amplify this signal and clean it up. As you can see, there's a lot of noise in this signal as well. However, the signal is measurable, so that's a good start. To amplify the signal, I use the LM393 comparator module, which comes with a hall sensor built in. We cheated a little bit. We removed the hall sensor and just attached the pins here so that our uh, hall sensor from the engine can be connected to it. Here you can see the module with the pins uh, connected. This module takes in 5 volts and provides the 5 volts to the sensor, so it's suitable for our engine. And also remember that the blue potentiometer needs to be adjusted uh, to the appropriate value so the signal transition is uh, detected. Otherwise, it will constantly stay high or constantly stay low. So you have to play with it. Now, in our case, we already did that. So I'm not going to go through it here. Here you see the signal is quite amplified.
still a bit noisy, so it needs to be filtered a little bit, but the signal value is quite high. So the signal condition changes when the RPM is increased. So it looks like at low RPM the signal is noisy, but at higher RPM it seems to work fairly well. And the signal strength is here, 3 volts peak to peak, which is very good and is exactly what we required uh, for our microcontroller input. Here's another view of the uh, this is YS27 module. You can see the red LED, it actually uh, switches on for each RPM. Because the RPM is so high, it looks like continuously switched on. But if the RPM is low, you can notice its flicker. And the signal is also very well uh, sized now. It's 3 volts peak to peak. I think our amplification uh, setup is quite good here. Let's recap what we have done in this video so far. We have checked three output methods and we have tested one input from the uh, engine. So the outputs we have tested is the starter motor control. We have tested the fuel pump control, both of which use a simple brushed DC motor controller and are very simply to uh, interface with the uh, any microcontroller. Then we have tested the glow plug control uh, which uses a glow plug control module easily available on the internet. Uh, we have used RCD3007. You can use other modules and I believe they will work the same. So all these three output methods uh, by default are very easy to interface with any microcontrol uh, and uh, they are uh, self-contained in their power components. So the microcontroller does not need to provide any power related uh, signals to them. It only requires to provide them the control signals. The input method that we tested was the engine RPM. So we saw that the hall sensor output directly from the engine is fairly low amplitude and cannot be directly used uh, to connect to the um, microcontroller system. We used a module here which is available on internet under the name of YS27 Hall Sensor Module. We removed the Hall Sensor and used that module as an amplifier to amplify the Hall Sensor signals from the engine. One thing that I mentioned earlier and I will repeat here is that there is a potentiometer on this module which needs to be adjusted to the right value so that the transitions are recorded. If the uh, potentiometer is set too high, all you will get is continuous high signal. If it is set too low, all you will get is a continuous low signal. But if it is set at the right point, the hall sensor signal from the engine will be amplified properly and you will get a much amplified signal at the output of this module. So there we have it. Uh, in the next video, we will look at the rest of the input methods and the output methods. Thank you for watching.